be it. How am I sound? We're good to go? Ooh, that had like an echo. Did, you, did anyone else hear that? Make sure this is on camera. Tudor's Biscuit World. There we go. Is that your sponsor? Are you gonna wear your no, no, this is just some real <laughs> West Virginia shit. So. Are you going to wear your headphones? Uh, yeah, I am. I just wanted to get the hat situated. Okay. Make sure lighting is good. Yeah, you're good. You're good. I love it. Oh, I kind of like Heartland in the shot. Should we flip the hat, or what are you thinking? Uh, the the issue with that was the lighting. The lighting. Since it's from above, do it. it had do a shadow it. on my face. So no, we can't do shadow on the face. But the George Strait, and we got the George Strait shirt on. This is nineteen ninety. This is a nineteen ninety four vintage George Strait tour T shirt. Really? Yeah. How many times have you seen the King? Uh, live zero. What? Really? I haven't been blessed with that uh, chance yet. I saw him recently. I saw him in um, uh, Austin City Limits last year. Incredible. Uh, it, it, he doesn't really do much. The songs are great, though. He has, I mean, at this point, it, what, he doesn't have to do much. What What does he need to do? He sings. He shows up there in his, and, and, and he walks on stage and sings. He sings, and the He's crowd goes legend. nuts. The yeah. crowd is insane. Here's what I wanted to ask you, because I want to applaud you, first of all. Are we starting yet? Is this, are we is on? This is this it? On. We're in. So, oh, okay, okay, so here's great. the thing. So David Morris on the podcast, he's got the number two what the number two sound on TikTok today. It moved today from number three to number two. Yeah, it did. Which is big. It's a big difference. And, um, and you know, we're going to get to number one with this podcast. But here's why I want to applaud you, because you put this song out, and you've got a lot of lovers. Mm -hmm. The song's blowing up. But, like, you've got a lot of haters who are like, who is this guy disrespecting the king? Like, blah, 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 like all this stuff. And I think you are nailing the tone with this. You are leaning into this with a big self awareness thing, first of all, of like getting what's going on, kind of getting the joke, but also like giving away tickets to a George Strait show, to being like, hey, love it or hate it. Like, I'm just playing the song. You cleared it with the songwriters. Like, you are nailing the tone of this. Like, how are you dealing with this? Because you're getting some hate right here from this song, right? Yeah, it was. I don't want to say I predicted it, but I saw it coming, right? Like, you sample George Strait with some hip-hop drums and this and that, and you're going to turn some heads. So the idea was, if people are just now discovering me as an artist, but if you go back and listen to my catalog, it's that's who I am. Country, pop, hip-hop, a blend of all the above, right? And um, I'm from West Virginia, Right, I live in Tennessee now, West Virginia and Tennessee. It's just, it's that's it, your song. It means so much to me. It's all it always has. Uh, but yeah, I just knew like, hey, if we're going out of our way to sample George Strait, interpolate George Strait, uh, there's definitely going to be some people, the more hardcore classic country purist, aren't going to like it, and that's fine. I get it, you know. Um, but the whole thing has been like, hey. You have to understand that A, it's coming from a place of respect for King George, and B, if you listen to my other music, this is a reflection of that. This isn't just someone coming in trying to like use a country song to get attention. This is like who I am. I'm a songwriter, I'm a singer, rapper, etc. So I think that once the song was out and started getting attention, and then people started looking into me and seeing the videos that we've been doing, we've been we gave away some George Strait tickets. Uh, How'd you, did you just buy the tickets and then did you give bought, them away? We just bought the tickets. Bought the tickets and you were gave like, hey. Gave them away and then um, uh, I'm going to do at the video on TikTok, but the, the couple, a guy and his wife, they live like an hour outside of Kansas City. They went to the show, messaged me, had a blast, the time of their lives. They had a, um, yeah, it was just like, you know, not every day you get free tickets. So uh, great, great section, 103, right near the stage. And that was awesome. And then we bought some of George's tequila to like, promote that and to like show people that like hey you can like support an artist without bringing another artist down because for as many hardcore George Strait fans there are out there there's also like 10x that amount of just trolls on TikTok who they don't like George Strait they're just seeing the hate and they're like apologize to George and it's like do it's you, not. It's not your fight. You're, like you're, yeah, you're 14. Like you, have you ever listened to George Strait? Do you know who he is? Yeah. You know, and yeah, it's just leaning in and understanding. Like, hey, this is par for the course. It comes with the territory, you know, and that's what you expect. So, is most of the hate around the song, or do you think people are actually attacking you? No, it's it's just simply around the song. Yeah, the people, because if people know me, they know that I've I've been doing country, rap, pop, everything for a long time. It's simply around the song. It's just like. You shouldn't touch a classic and all this stuff. And like, 
I get it. It's a valid point, you know. And why though? Why well, why not touch a classic? It, it just means so much to people, right? And it means so much to me. And because it does, that's why I wanted to put my spin on it. But to other people, you know, they may not like rap music or they may not like pop music, and they may be super purist. And I respect it. It's like it's not for everybody, and that's totally fine. And I'm willing to accept that. Like I'm not on there arguing with people. I'm just saying, hey, respect, all love, you know. Don't Do you like have him. thick skin? Because we were talking about this a second ago before we started rolling. Like, there are a lot of trolls on here. I mean, the song speaks for itself. It's the number two song on TikTok. You've got some of the biggest influencers in the world who are using this sound and making hilarious clips with it. Great. Great clips. Great clips. But, like, people are hating this song. Like, that doesn't tear you up a little bit, or do you well, really just brush it brush it off? Here's the thing is people aren't hating this song. People are streaming the crap out of this song. People are, it's lo- doing people really well. are loving this song. Trolls on TikTok are hating on the song. So there's a distinct difference, right? It's like if people were hating a song in in mass, I wouldn't be here talking to you, right? Like people love this song because it's great, right? I put a lot of work into it. But trolls on the internet are hating on it, and that's fine. Or people who are very passionate about their opinion. But I will say I've had several people since I posted my last video, dang, this is actually really catchy. After, I've, <laughs> after I went and listened to the whole song, right? And then I also think there's a bit of, for some people, and we can all agree, once you hear a song at nauseum on TikTok, you're tired of it. You might not have even ever heard the song, right? Like the, there's a TikTok sound. Uh, is it Glass Animals? It's like um, the um, late uh, night in the middle of you. you. I had never heard that song in my entire life, but I had heard it at nauseum on TikTok, and I was like. What is, I don't, I, don't, I went and listened to it. I was like, oh, this song is like a completely different vibe of what I expected. What the, what the little bit is that exactly. you hear on TikTok. And so that's where, that's where I think it is. And I think that if you don't like the song, that's fine. But maybe if you checked out some of my other songs, you might dig that. Or it may, at the very least, be like, he's a cool guy. You know, that's fine. It's not, I just, I don't know these people. So why would I let an opinion or a, a tweet or a, a message or comment, ruin my day. Right. I'm great. I'm living great right now. Yeah. So now you send the tequila video that you don't drink tequila. Do you not drink at all, or do you just not I drink don't. tequila? No, I don't. I don't drink at all. It's just a personal choice. I don't, I don't drink either. Yeah. I just, mm, um, you know, m- respect, but I just never have really. So I'm all for it. Enjoy. Smoke your weed. Drink your beer. Drink your tequila. I love that. You bought that. You said that you were like, I don't even drink tequila, but here I am with like six bottles of George Strait's tequila. Yeah. Uh, supposedly, some of the best tequila on the market, Codigo. Um, That's a big plug right there from yeah. David Morris. Uh, from what I understand, George Strait's very passionate and works really hard on that brand. And it is great. When I walked into the liquor store to buy it, there was literally 10 different options ranging from $50 to $400. Um. So, yeah, I mean, that's awesome. But, yeah, I just, like, here's the thing, and I said in that video, is, like, if you don't support me, that's fine, right? I'm not going to be, my music isn't going to be for everybody. But if you claim to be such a big fan of this person or that person, support that person, right? Like, if you don't like my song, stick it to me. Go ahead. Go to iTunes and buy his song. Buy the original song, right? Because the the writers, Jeff Stevens and Steve Bogard. They're on the track. They, yeah, they, they get credit on my song as, as writers, and they get royalties, and they gave me the clearance, and the same on George's song. So it's like, support them, support George, buy that. You know, it's like, it shouldn't be a, I don't like your song, whatever. It should be a, you know what, I don't like your song. I have to, I have to support the original, right? It's like, I just don't think people think about that. And there are plenty of fans that obviously are huge George fans and supporters and bias to kill and do all that. But again, we're talking about TikTok and it's a different demographic there. So I just wanted to prove that point that like, hey, a lot of you are just here talking, right? You're just commenting. You're not actually like about that life. You're not really about supporting or standing up for artists that you like. You're just here to leave a comment. So it's like, okay. Yeah, right. So, okay. So talk me through this song because... You you pick the sample because of your connection to yeah. it geographically, but so did you pick the song and then did you sort of play with like pitching up the melody like how like how how'd you put it together? So what happened was is one of my really good buddies, uh, his name's Ko Beats. He is from 
Charleston from West Virginia, where I'm from. By the way, I don't know who that is because I was looking at the credits. And I was like, who are these people? And I was trying to find them on Instagram. Yeah. And maybe they're on Instagram, but I, I couldn't find the accounts. Like, I, I don't even know who these people are. Am I missing out? Like, like who is yeah, so, KO Beats? So, so my buddy Bobby, KO Beats, great producer, specializes in like really like rap music. That's what he's kind of made a name for. And he loves country music because like me, we grew up in the same hometown. And, you know, we had just been talking for a while about like wanting to flip a country song and blending those genres because that's who we are. That's what we like, right? We we go throughout our days listening to both rap music and country music, and we always have. And we were just talking about all the, the classic songs we love and this and that. And then uh, we were talking one night about all the songs that mentioned West Virginia, right? And there's a Jake Owen song that he says... Um, Baby, I go anywhere. West Virginia, baby, I don't care, right? And I was like, man, that's just so cool. And then with Carrying Your Love With Me came up. We started discussing that and playing that. And, you know, when you sample something, you need to isolate the vocals from it and all that stuff. And do you do that with Melodyne or no? How, how do you there's do that? Just, there's just different apps. That, so that's something. There's different plugins and stuff. Anyways, so I was like, yeah, I don't know how, like, we would get, like, acapella, re-sing it. It would be a lot of work. And the next day, K.O. texted me. He's like, I think I'm working on the one. And... He sent me the beat, and he had sampled it, and he had pitched up the vocals, and he had kind of the rough version of what we hear now. And then he sent it to me, and I wrote my parts and recorded it, and sequenced stuff, added stuff. I texted him. I was like, hey, we need we need the drum roll going to the chorus. We need this and that. We had a buddy of mine, Kurt Stevens, great Nashville singer Wait, I love Kurt Stevens, a Florida guy. Florida guy. And we actually grew up in the same town. Vero in, Beach. In New York. Well, you know, so what's funny is I met Kurt – at the station, and he sat down next to me and started talking. We went to the same elementary school in New York, had the same teachers, and he moved when he was probably seven or eight years old oh, wow. to Florida. But I love Kurt. Great guy. Incredible voice also. One of the most underrated <laughs> vocalists in town. He's, For sure. he's phenomenal. Yeah, and I, I, I called him. I said, hey, I need somebody to sing this George Strait chorus. And he was like, I love that song. And we got in. I was like, I need it, you to sing it exactly, right, because we need to like, re-pitch it up, and we want it to sound like the original. He killed it. Amazing. Did a Wait, great, so great is job. that – are we hearing Kurt? We're hearing Kurt. So that's not George's nope. vocal pitched up. No, it's Kurt's vocal pitched it's up. Kurt's vocal pitched yeah, up. Yeah, the way it works in the music industry is, you know, to clear the, the usage of – Yeah, to clear the usage of, like, melody and lyrics, you have to get the songwriter permission. And then to clear the master, you would have to go to a record label. So if we use George's vocals or any of the guitars or anything on the original track, we would have to clear that. But because we replayed it, you know, we didn't have to do that. So – we got full clearance to do what we did, but it just made it a little bit easier and gave us a little bit more freedom to kind of do what we wanted. So, okay, so Kurt Stevens on the vocal, which and I think vocal. is a fun fact. Fun fact. Um, but you, but you brought it to the songwriters. Is that because you're signed with Sony Publishing? Yeah. Do they help bring it to the? Do you even need to bring it to the songwriters? Yeah, so, like, how's that work? Yeah. So the the story, the way that it all came together is, uh, it was just announced, but it was last year I signed like a partnership with Sony Music Publishing, so that as an artist, I'm still independent do my own thing but on a publishing side you know people see and they're oh he's a rapper or, oh he does pop music or country or whatever but i'm a songwriter at heart so you know i signed with sony and partnered with them so that i could start writing songs for other artists and you know having more of a reach as a songwriter because at the end of the day like i always put the lyrics first and what i'm trying to say and uh so I was just playing the song for, for my guys at Sony, Kenley and Rusty, who's the CEO. Kenley's the a r my a Gaston. My a r yeah. Rusty's the man. Um, I don't know if you if you've had him on this podcast yet. No, but you know, we've tried to have him on a couple times, and scheduling has never worked okay, out. But at some he, point, we, a, we're, we're going to have him on. He's a great dude, and Kenley as well, two guys that have had amazing journeys uh, just in this business and have done it the right way. And so I was playing on this. I was like, hey, we have like a – I sampled George Strait. Like, I don't know if this is, like, possible, right? It was kind of like a a proof of concept. It wasn't finished. And I didn't want to spend all this time and money, like, finishing a song, getting it mixed and mastered. To if, have them say, like, yeah. it's not And gonna... Rusty Hurdy was just like, dude, this is amazing. I'll be right back. And he left the room, and he called both the songwriters on the spot and just put kind of put the bug in their ear about it and see if they were open to it. And he was just like, I need you to finish this. I need you to re-record you know, the chorus, do this, X, Y, and Z. And uh, he's like, I'm going to take care of the clearances and stuff. And he did. And it was just amazing. Hats off to him. Much, much love to, to Rusty for believing in the song. Um, 
And the rest is kind of history, man. So if those songwriters had said, hey, man, I'm not cool with this, did he play them the song or he just pitched them the idea Uh, of that? No, I, I I believe he sent them the song. So I mean, if they had been they, like, they had, yeah, everybody heard the song. Yeah. Um I think they were just open to the idea, and like it was like a hey, let me hear it sort of thing. And um, you know, by the time the song came out, everybody was on board and excited. And then since the song has came out, the songwriter Steve and Jeff have texted me and just been very supportive. And it's just really cool. And it's like a great way. It's like you know they wrote this song, it came out in '97. I don't know when they first wrote it, but let's say they wrote it around then. I mean. They wrote this song over 25 years ago, and yet now they're gonna see even more income from you know that song, and that's what's cool. Is like I just told them I, I was like, thank you for letting me put my twist on on your song, and that's what's awesome about songwriting collaboration is like it's not only not only do these songs stand the test of time, but depending on how they're presented or at what time they're presented, they can have different meanings, right? They could touch different people in different ways, and. The coolest thing that I've been seeing is I have moms and dads on TikTok who are messaging me who are saying, hey, my 10-year-old daughter was just playing this song on her phone. She said she found it on TikTok. So I went back and I showed her the original that I grew up listening to. And we had a, we had a moment where we like bonded over it and how cool that was. And to me, that's like even one comment like that, like that makes the – 10 cool. hater comments like irrelevant you know yeah right and um yeah, it's just really cool to see that this song for for the songwriters is like 25 years later is like still as relevant as ever now so i think forget the money but people want the money but it's just i think it's cool that how like you know to have your song culturally relevant again yeah in the mainstream 25 years later it yeah it's just that's the beauty of music right is like songs stand the test of time and uh it's like it's reaching whole new audiences now because you had to be a country fan to know the original song. Like it was a huge country hit in the late 90s, but I've had a bunch of people who like country music that are like, oh, I've never heard that original. I, I know George Strait, right? But never heard that song. Never heard that song. Yeah, right. Which is cool. So, okay. So, what's the deal here? Because so you record the song, you get the rights, and then you put it out. Was this song like a single? Like, were you pushing this? As it's as as a single, or was it just random that this was the song that got so much momentum? So, so what happened was is that we we've dropped five singles leading up to an EP release. The EP had six songs on it, technically speaking. So there was a sixth song that hadn't been released, and the last single, the fifth single, was "Carrying Your Love." And so we dropped "Carrying Your Love," and then we dropped the EP. The Hometown Heartbreak. Hometown Heartbreak. EP. And so, Carrying Your Love was the last of the songs that we had. We, we dropped It Hits Me, uh, Butterflies, Country Boy in Your Life, um, Mine, and Carrying Your Love. And then the song Seeing Him was like the album-only track that came out with the EP, which is also, I think, a smash. And, um, yeah, we, we, we like... You know, we released it. We gave it some attention. We started doing some sort of promotion behind it. Just, Spent a little money, you know. What do you spend money on? You spend money on uh, music video. You spend money the on... The music video is fun, actually. I, I like the music video. You. But you know what? I actually thought, because I went back and I watched the Carrying Your Love With Me music video by George Strait, mm-hmm. and I felt like I thought there was going to be a connection or something. I thought it would have been cool to have like shot it in a theater or something the way he did. Did you, you know, ever think about that? We did, and my thought was, I already know people are going to say that I am trying to you know, get a name off of like his clout and like, you know, do something that's unoriginal, whatever people, you know, and yeah. I just knew that if we did something like that, it would be a little too close. And I was like, Hmm, let me just do my own, my own thing, you know, we, yeah. you know, cause I'm a big music video guy. And so yeah, music video and then, you know, other like marketing stuff on social media and ads and influencers and stuff. And we just did a little, uh, kind of like a light spend on that to like, kind of see if it would catch on a little bit. And it didn't, we were just like, Oh, cool, all good, we're going to promote this, and I'm going to go back to this. And there was some Apologize to George videos popping up, and there were some, you know, cute videos popping up. How, and, how long ago was that? This was like six weeks ago, maybe? Six, six weeks ago. Yeah, and it was like the reception to the song was my fans loved it, and then other people were discovering it. And then we saw some people that, you know, were like, oh, Apologize to George. And I don't even get what that means. Like, I, what, like, what I does that even mean? I, I don't like, know. I don't, I say, he's it, not even the writer on it. Yeah, it's like, and also it's like George Strait is beyond 
the level of anybody's yeah. comprehension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, you know, he's probably sitting there like, cool, you know. And it's interesting because I just kind of every song that I put out, I think is my best song, and then your next song is your, best, your best song. Selling. And so I was just like, cool. I'm gonna keep promoting. Seeing him, the other single on the album, promoting uh, mine and carrying your love or country, carrying your love with me, country boy, and your love. So I'm gonna just continue to post. You don't want to. I'm a fan of like just constantly putting content out there on TikTok and stuff versus putting the same song a hundred times. Yeah, you weren't putting all the eggs in one basket. You yeah, were it, seeing like what was gonna exactly. work, what was that's, gonna stick. That's kind of what I do, and it works different for different people. But I instead of putting all the eggs in one basket, I'm just like promote 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 and then if if i see traction for one thing i'm like okay cool and then i'll double down and the video was doing kind of good uh one of my videos was doing good and then i started seeing a couple of different trends pop up and i started seeing apologize to george was a trend and people were doing that i was like dude yeah i've got probably 400 videos of you guys apologize to george and then i'm reading the comments and the comments are 50 50 love this don't like this. Where can I find this? This isn't that bad. This is great. And I'm sitting here thinking, okay, well, this this video just had, let's say, 200,000 views and got 20,000 likes. Apologize to George or whatever it was. And I'm like, 20,000 likes. And I'm like reading the comments and I'm like, okay, well, let's say out of the 20,000 likes or out of the whatever views, half those people had to go listen to it to like make sure they didn't like it, right? And I'm yeah, like, right. this is helping me. And so it was cool because at that point, we realized that, like, huh, what I thought was going to happen is going to happen, which is this is going to get people talking. And so I know the song is great. I mean, I make music for a living. Like, this is what I do. Like, I was, I'm was, i very confident when I put out something. So I'm like, it's all working to plan. And then as it continued to grow, I started. we started to see just, like, the, the, the trend that you now see, which is, like, a positive, happy, amazing trend. So did you come up trend. with that trend, or who comes up with that trend? People on the internet just came up. So you had nothing to do with the trend of like, show me something that you're carrying that you love. Like that's, that's what everybody's doing. That's why this song has become as big as it is now on TikTok is because it's it's been organic. The trend found itself organically. Every every celebrity that's ever done it has done it for free organically on their own free will. We have not paid any, you know, what, what a JoJo Siwa like. She would probably charge yeah, somebody. she's showing her bald spot. She would probably I mean, charge yeah. somebody like a hundred thousand dollars to do that for their some. Like, yeah, it's or all Tano. Like, yeah, everyone's just doing it exactly, and it's all organic, and that's what is so exciting to me is because, like, you know, I'm an independent artist. Like, me and my team, we do everything in house, and it's like, it, it's crazy because you have record labels that will literally pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to try and do this for one of their songs, and so. That's that's why I just feel so confident and so excited about it is because it's it's been organic and it's like, you know, hey, is it lightning in a bottle? Maybe, but I just know that that's a reflection of like people like people have similar tastes in music that I do and that's really cool to see, you know? Yeah, right. So is the big takeaway cuz everybody's trying to crack this algorithm that mm -hmm. you've kind of cracked over the past couple of weeks. Is the big takeaway just, you know, th kind of like you said like throw stuff against the wall, see what sticks and then when someone gets a little bit of momentum lean into that. Like is that the strategy? Like have you taken away any strategy from what's happening? I would say that's accurate, but that's just me, right? It's like there are so many artists that I know that are very successful on TikTok and on socials that will double down on one thing forever like they'll they'll plot a release date six weeks out and they'll only post that song every day at nauseam for six weeks and i get that strategy because it's like you're picking up new fans along the way you're making some fans upset because they're like just give me the song already yeah right but some fan you, you're picking up news along the way so that works for for some people me is like i want to be inspired and excited to like make videos and do stuff so i'm like i'm and i also think that a lot of my songs have the ability to like reach wider audiences so that's my thing is i just try different stuff and then my personal opinion on it it is is like i would rather promote a song once it's out versus promote it try to sell a pre-order simply because at any time with the tiktok algorithm a video could go viral right so for some reason we could clip up a section of this interview and it goes viral and if this isn't available to the public they're going to move on. They're going to move on. They're not going to listen But to it. if it's out now, they're going to, while they're in that zone, while they're connected to that video, that song, they're going to go check it out. So that's what my thing is, is like, instead of spending time trying to promote the pre-release of something, 
you know, because it's like the video you the video you put up for the first time. What do you guys think about this? Goes viral. People six weeks from now, there's no guarantee they're gonna see your video again or get. So that's just where I like. That's my what I do. And it's just like, and I see other artists do that as well. It's like, hey, the song's out. If it's out, people can go see it. And I think that um, I think that there's definitely different strategies for different people. And when it comes to social media and TikTok, I feel like there's so much pressure on artists to do it, whether they're signed or unsigned. There's a lot of pressure of promote yourself. Not everybody's cut out for it, right? A lot of times you can see an artist, you can look and you're like, are they being forced to do this? You know, you just look at it and you're like, "Mm." and that's my thing is like, I just try to do it when I feel like doing it and like maybe save some drafts and get it ready and just schedule it, whatever. But like, you know, social media has become a job for many artists and it's very taxing. And so I've just found what works for me. It's like, hey, release music, promote it and, you know, continue to, like you just said, it's like test the waters and bounce back and forth. And yeah, no, I get it. So what's the thing now? Because the risk with a moment like this is people know the song, yeah. but they for, they don't know who David Morris is. They don't, they don't know about him. And I think you're doing a good job of leaning into the content and making your face and your artistry known. But like, how are you thinking about this? Are you thinking like, Hey, we need to get a follow up right away. Are you thinking yeah. let's lean into this moment? Yeah. Like, like what's the, what's the next step? Well, funny enough is we always operate on a consistency basis and so we're releasing a song this week that we had planned out for a couple weeks anyways and so it's just like our plan out the next three months it was like drop the ep and then like a month later or whatever release another single so we'll release another single that like leans into the country rap sound even more but the thing about it is is like you especially like when this has happened so organically like you can't control it right so i'm not in control of if people go check out the song and then forget about me but like all i can do is say hey i'm gonna continue releasing music i'm gonna i'm gonna make sure that every song i put out every song is my best song right every next song so like i know that the quality of work that i have out is great and so i just have faith that people hear this and are like dang this is really cool this is it's different what else has he done and then they go and listen to who hurt you and does he know about us and mine and uh, country boy in your life and there's like wow this is dope and so that's really all i can do is continue doing what i'm doing and I, I think that if this was my first release ever, I would be worried about that. But because I have such a solid fan base already before this, and because I have such solid traction on other songs, it's just like a, it's a really good feeling of like the proof is in the pudding already. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, yeah. wait. So give me a little backstory, David Morris, yeah. because this is, you know, self admittedly, I actually, I knew a couple of your songs because you've had a little bit of playlisting. I knew. Does he know about us? Yeah. That was, does he know about us? That was, yeah. that was catchy. Yeah. I knew that. Sweating a little bit in here, Zach. Is, is it hot in here? Nah, or, it's, it's the, the lights, I think. It's the lights? Yeah, does he know about us? Great. It's a you banger. Look, you, you don't look sweaty. You, you look okay. fantastic, right, David good, Morris. Thank, thank you, let me, thank let you, me tell you that. But wait, so you're sorry. from West Virginia. From Charleston, West Virginia. How, how old are you? Can I ask how old you are? Old enough. Old enough? 32. 32? You look fantastic. Thank you, By brother. the way, I was curious. <laughs> you are, fantastic. Are, are, you, are you Jewish, David Morris? You know what? I am. I knew it, right? I'm, or, Ju- I'm Jewish too. Let me clarify. Let me clarify. Yeah, yeah. I'm my, Jewish. My, uh, exactly. I'm my, Jewish. My dad's family, Jewish. Mom's yeah. family, Christian. So interesting. Technically speaking, when the mother is Jewish, it's you're pa- not Jewish. That's true. It's pa- pa- technically, it's, technically it's te- speaking, passed down matrilineally. So technically, no. But heritage wise, sure. Did you celebrate like Hanukkah and Christmas? When I was a kid, I went to. Here's a little. This is a little back. I haven't talked about this interview. This is a little background for for everybody wondering about whatever. When I was a kid growing up in West Virginia, my mom's uh, sister, her her kids, my cousins, went to uh, St. Agnes with Catholic school. And so, long story short, we ended up going to St. Agnes, my brother and I, to be with our cousins, family stuff, or whatever, you know. And every during the week, every Wednesday at noon, after lunch, you go to Mass. And so we're in there like catholic school mass or whatever you know and my dad and mom are divorced separated when we were really young and my dad's like hey if they're gonna learn about like catholicism and jesus and all this stuff then they also should learn about their jewish roots and so on sundays we went to sunday school and we learned about hebrew and the israelites and all that stuff so it's really funny because you have my mom who's like leans more christian then you have us going to a Catholic school, and then you have my dad and going He's kind to the, of pushing and, a little bit of Jewish heritage. Exactly, and so 
you know, that was a, an interesting upbringing to say the least. And then we got into middle school and went to public school and stuff and had enough of the, the Catholic school was, you know, um, you wear uniforms, right? You wear the, the blue dockers and David the white Morris shirt. is not wearing a uniform. He's, he's wearing a vintage he's George not, Strait he's t-shirt. Not. Um, but it, it was cool to experience both, right? The private school up until grade seven and, and then public school. It was cool to experience both sides of the spectrum, I guess. Looking back, obviously, as a kid, you hated it, you know, hated the uniforms and stuff. But Did you get bar mitzvah? Did not. Fair enough. Did not. No. So, okay, wait. So you're growing up in West Virginia, and then did you start music when you were really young, or when did you I started start? music in my college dorm room at West Virginia University. So relatively late in life for, yeah, compared to other I had all Yeah, I had always rapped, freestyled with the friends, wrote graffiti, skateboarded. That was kind of my thing. And then I remember in high school, I had this, this girlfriend, my first girlfriend, and she was a big Bob Dylan fan. She put me on a Bob Dylan, and um, I just remember the, that's when I kind of found out about folk music. Because my, my mom had always played country music. My dad had played some stuff, like Simon and Garfunkel and that sort of stuff. And he had played some of classic rock. and Very eclectic. My older brother, hip-hop. So I grew up very eclectic. But I remember when this girl showed me like Bob Dylan and was playing it is when I discovered a love for like lyrics. When it... it it stopped being old people music. You know when you're a kid and you're listening to like oh, country oh. and you know classic rock. You're like, this is old people music. I started to discover that and get excited about music in general and how you can paint pictures with words. And then I started rapping in uh, my college dorm room and released music uh, under the name D.Y. up until from like 2009 ish to 2014, and that was just more rap centered stuff. I had moved from West Virginia, graduated school. I'm going to give you a whole rundown here. Give me a rundown. Graduated school from WU, moved to New York City, was like, I want to do music. This is where the music industry is. Not knowing anything about the music industry, though. Then that took me to L.A. L.A. took me to Nashville. And so, basically, I was releasing music under the name D.Y., different moniker. And it got to the point where I had ran from West Virginia because growing up in West Virginia, you feel like there's nothing here for you. Thank you, sir. Oh, it's just a little hot in here. You don't even look sway to me. This it's is just the lights, the man. Lights. It's just the lights. Am, so I, this, am I making you nervous, David dude, Morris? Dude, you are fucking asking the tough questions here, buddy. <laughs> um, no, so <clears throat> you grew up in West Virginia, like a lot of places in America, small small town, small-ish town, enough to where you know everybody and you're comfortable and you're just like, what am I going to do with my life? So I was like, hey, I'm going to get out of here kind of ran away in a sense I, I came back and visited but like I was like I would never live here I would never settle down here and it was at 2014 that I was like dude something's missing like creatively I'm not inspired I'm I'm like considered I'm just like people are looking at me a certain way and like you know at that point like now I, like, I play guitar and I write songs and I'm just like I want to like do that right and so it was 2014 when I was like I'm retiring that moniker i'm gonna release music as david morris i'm gonna start writing all my songs on guitar I'm not gonna rap again i was like i didn't know exactly what the path was but i was like i just need to like get back to my roots i need to embrace where i'm from i need to embrace the fact that i came from west virginia and i got out and i saw x y and z on the way there and that's what it's been it's been a just a rebranding and a refocusing to get closer to like who I am actually instead of who I thought people would like me to be. Yeah, right. And so it's been quite the journey. And it really has. So how long have you been in Nashville? I've been in Nashville the past five years on and off where it started out and it was like, I'll go like, you know, uh, a couple of days out of the month. I'll go a week out of the month. I'll go two weeks out of the month to where now it's like I'm here most of the time and I still go back to L.A. And um, my fiance is in L.A., and I still have a friend, like KO Beats lives in LA now. So we're working on music and wherever I need to be, whenever I need to be, just, I mean, it's easier than getting to Memphis in a car. It's like you hop on, it's a three and a half hour flight to LA. So, yeah. Um, and do you work on any other, do you work on any other artists' music as like a producer or a writer, or is basically everything you do, everything that you work on your own artist it, it, project? Yeah, is, is my stuff. And then I'm all, I write for songs that are you know getting pitched and stuff that hopefully somebody will cut because they're really good and if not i'll just cut them but that's the goal is like to not only be a successful artist but also be a successful songwriter because that's just always been a goal of mine and every song that i've released 
99.9 of it has been written solely by me, um, which I just take great pride in. And it's not out of the lack of collaboration. It's more so just out of the me trying to make sure that it's me, you know? Yeah, right. So when you see these collabs or these people who are using your sound on TikTok, yeah. like Jojo Siwa or yeah. Tana, like when Insane. those clips come in, how, how do you get notified? I, I've never had a video go viral like that. How do you yeah. get notified that they've used the sound? Like, do you see, hey, Jojo Siwa just used your sound? I get you it. Go, Holy fuck. I, I, so I had the Jojo Siwa thing. I get a text from KO Beats. His nine-year-old daughter texted him and said, Dad, Jojo Siwa used your song. Can you send it to David? Like, that's crazy. No way. And he texts me and he's like, dude, Samaya just sent me this. Actually, Samaya's his daughter. I think she's like, I think she's 12 um, ish. Um, I don't want to say that wrong. What's up, Samaya? Um, but yeah, she was just like, she, she keeps sending all the updates. And then you can go on the sound and see the top sounds and stuff. And like, when you see Jojo Siwa or Tana or the, the recent one that went viral yesterday was Two Turnt Tony, who's mm. a TikTok a, you know, influencer guy. Hilarious. Um, yeah, just people will just hit you up and tag you in it and be like, dude, this is so cool. And it is really cool. I'm like, dude, I, you know, I watch these people's videos and stuff. And I really don't, Jojo Siwa is someone that like, uh, demographically, you know, I, I don't know if I can relate to, I, I'm not like familiar with her stuff aside from knowing that she's extremely popular and successful. So much love to her for, for using that. But if you ask me like, what show is Jojo Siwa in? I'm, I, what I show could, was she I, I couldn't tell you. Was she in? What, which one? Dance Moms. Dance Moms. Yeah. Couldn't tell you. Blair that. over here, our resident. Respectfully. I Social just, media. Demographically aspect. speaking, it's not. Demogra- no, I I, <laughs> I I know. It doesn't really mean that much to me. But you know she's massive, so it's big. Yeah, and it's she's huge. super cool. Yeah, yeah. of course. So, okay, so the song is out right now. By the way, David Morris, he has the number two song on TikTok. And his EP, Hometown Heartbreak, is out now. Eight songs on the CP. Yeah. You need to listen to the CP. It's, it's, actually, it's six songs with uh, two bonus tracks. If two you will. bonus tracks. Yeah, if, you will. Me. if you will. Eight songs makes it an album. So technically, I guess it is. But I just like to promote it as an EP. We put two songs that are, have already been out on there so that as people discover it and catch up a little bit. Do you feel like this is kind of your moment? Because I feel like in the music industry, you always have these like – like these false starts kind of where you get yeah. you feel like you're having momentum and then it kind of dies and it's like oh this, oh this is my moment and then it kind of dies and you're always chasing that do you feel like this is it for you or who who knows <laughs> yeah so i would say this is the first big moment for sure but i feel like because it's kind of came out of not left field but it's came so organically that instead of sitting here celebrating be excited i'm just like just as in awe as everybody else, I'm like, dude, what? We're gonna like we're gonna hit a million TikTok uses this week, and I'm like, what? Like that's cr-. like I'm sitting here trying to understand uh, the the magnitude of it because at the end of the day, I don't get. It is great to have the number two song on TikTok. It is great to see the growths and streams in my catalog, but like I don't get lost in in that stuff. Like I try to see the forest through the trees and say, okay, what's next? How are we gonna do this? We're prepping the the live show to get on tour and kind of thinking ahead of saying like, all right, if I lose focus now, then this moment goes to waste. But if I stay focused and continue to do what I'm doing, then we can make the most of this moment, right? Yeah. Makes sense. Wait, so what's your so you're, you're heading on tour right now? Are you putting the show together? Yes, yeah, so we're putting the show together. And um, what's it gonna look like? It's gonna so to start, it's probably gonna look just like me drummer guitarist then as we get you know if the budget permits you know if there's a show budget if it's a if it's support for somebody or if it's a festival gig and there's more money to be had or whatever we will bring on a full band dj that's the ideal setup right is me full band dj but obviously traveling with so many people is expensive once you get to like the tour bus level where somebody's sponsoring a tour bus and you're making good money then you can assess and say all right we are we have the ability to bring on a bass player a keyboardist a dj but i think for you you need what well, you need tracks and like yeah, you said, so drummer the, the, guitar player the, the drummer be the, the drummer cues the tracks and then a guitarist plays and I'll, I'll have a guitar on some songs and stuff and that's where we'll start but the the way that we have the show set up is uh very flexible you know my buddy seth alley shout out to seth he's he's been in the lab with me we've just been figuring out a way to make it so that if this show we decide to add on two more players it's very easy go in tracks adjust boom 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 and that's what's going to be exciting is i'll be able to play shows that are more 
like maybe the audience is more rap, hip hop, pop, kind of that leaning that way. And I'll be able to push those that are more country leaning and everything in the middle. So super excited. That's the, that's the main feedback I've gotten from all this is when are you going on tour? So we're, uh, we're prepping that right now. I would love to see you live. I feel like you would put on an incredibly entertaining show. Uh, I, I, I think it'd be great. I think you'd bring a great energy. Thank you, man. Yeah. Oh, the energy's there. That's the, that's the thing is, you know, uh, being on stage performing, it's, uh, where I feel at home. I love yeah. it. I'm very excited to get back on back on the road. So it's gonna happen. So what did you bring me? You brought me a vinyl I brought right you, here. I brought you a signed vi- vinyl. What what is this? So when when you get vinyls made, right? Oftentimes, vinyl CDs, shirts, whatever, they send you samples where they say, "Hey, we need you to approve this. Everything looks good. Everything you know works." Um, and so they sent it to us, and we had about twelve of them, and they all had this little tear. And I remember emailing back, and I was like. Hey guys, this looks amazing. Dot dot dot. Except the tear on the top of them, and they were like, "Oh, sorry, that must have been done in transit or whatever." So we had twelve of these. We've been signing them and just giving them out to like friends, family, and and other cool people. So I wanted to give you this as a, uh, and I can I can I can sign it out to whoever. But as a one of twelve original sample of the this of the is vinyl so cool. before Let me it came see that. out. So this is an original tear. Yeah. This is a David Morris. Yeah, tear. I mean, you know, if these were like Pokemon cards, that would be like super rare. Um, but if you open it up, man, the the it's really cool. The vinyl is red, white, and blue. You can buy these on my merch store. Um, they all come signed. They will not have the uh, one of twelve limited edition sample on them. But uh, look at that's that. really cool, man. Can we get a shot of that? That is so cool right there. Yeah. How cool. Flip is it. Jose, like, flip it upside down for the people. There it is. Boom. Look at that. So that's oh. my my debut album, 2020, Red, White, and American Blues. Um, and then the follow up EP that just came out, Hometown Heartbreak. And then later this year, there will probably be another EP or an album as well. So I love this. David Morris, I got an official tear uh album. Yeah. One of twelve. I think these could be valuable. Uh, you might want to get you might want to get that graded by the people who do like the baseball cards. Gonna, I might I might send it to them. Yeah, hey, man, like, I really appreciate that. This is really cool. I'm, thanks, I'm gonna, man. I'm glad I'm gonna you put did, this yeah. somewhere. That's Absolutely. awesome. Um, David Morris on the podcast. Have we left anything out? What's been unsaid? Uh, that's up to you, brother. I could talk all day. It's up to you. Got any questions? How you feeling? I've been asking questions all day. By the way, so we asked a bunch of we asked we made a post on TikTok and Instagram, and we had some fans send questions. I think Blair is gonna pull up. What what do the fans want to know? What what were the fans asking? Blair's pulling up some questions here. We had, we had a handful. I thought I might be able to go in and find them. Is this your favorite moment as an artist so far? Is this your favorite moment as an artist so far? Yeah. Who asked that? For sure. That was Michaela Wiseman. Michaela Wiseman wants to know, is this your top Definitely. moment as an artist? Definitely. It's just cool because... The goal as an artist, or my goal, isn't to be super famous, isn't to be super rich. It's to have my music connect with a lot of people. And because it connects with a lot of people, those things tend to come, right? But I feel like so many artists just want to be famous or just want to be rich. And you can you can be rich but not famous. You could be famous but not rich. And you could be both of those things but not a lot of people know your music. So, like, that's the goal. And so it's just really cool to see the song spread. People 8 to 80 listening to the song is awesome. Yeah, that is really cool. Okay, thank that. Great question. What else we got? Do we get a couple others? Yeah. Uh, anything you know now, you wish you knew when you were starting your career. Anything you know now that you wish you knew. Who asked that? That is Gabriella Della Ponte. Gabriella Della Ponte wants to know anything you knew now that you wish you knew when you were starting your career. Yeah, for sure. I wish I knew. It just it's it would just come down to like the experience stuff, like the songwriting. Like I wish I I wish when I first started, I wish I played guitar from day one versus starting like four or five years in. Do you feel like you're a good good guitar player? Uh, good enough to write and then play some of my songs, like rhythm. Nothing crazy. Uh, I am. Uh, let's how would I out of, out of one to John Mayer level? I'm probably like a. Two and a half, that's three. Like everybody, though. Yeah, I know. But here's the thing: is that's I surround myself with people who are just incredible guitar players. So yeah, it's just like I do enough to get by, and to to play acoustic in my songs. And so I would. That's what I'd probably say to my. What I knew back then would be like, hey, study music theory and study the art of songwriting. But then again, I don't. I, mean, I don't regret anything. You know, that's, yeah, right. It's not something I would. You know, yeah. use a use a genie in a bottle wish on, but. Just something I think you you learn from experience. You know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. So. What would you use a genie bottle wish on? Can I use it for more wishes? 
No, get the fuck out of here, David Morris. <laughs> what uh, else, what else we we'll got? See, we'll see. What else we got, Blair? A- any others? Uh, yes, last one. If you had to pick one, would it be Elvis or Hank Senior? If you had to pick one, would it be this Elvis is, and, or and, Hank Senior? And this Senior? is from Christian Amadeus, m- one of my good buddies who, oh, okay. who works with my stuff. And it's because him and I talk about this all the time. Elvis, Hank Senior, arguably two of the most influential artists of all time, right? Hank Senior influenced every. Yeah. I mean, they still reference Hank, both in, Hank a- Junior everywhere. and Senior everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. And then Elvis is inspired so much. I would pick Elvis just because when I was young, I discovered Elvis before Hank Senior, and just recently saw the Elvis movie. I've, I haven't seen it. Yet. I gotta see it. Right? Austin Butler as Elvis, phenomenal. I think Tom Hanks is getting criticism because his character is a little over the top, but I think that was like the point. I think that's how the Colonel was or whatever, but phenomenal. Um, also, last night I stumbled upon because I'd watched some uh, trivia about the movie or something and some interviews with the cast. Stumbled upon a uh, conspiracy theory about Elvis that he's still alive and he's his name is uh, he's Pastor Bob Joyce from Arkansas. That Elvis faked his death and has been living an unassuming life as a pastor. Do and they know where the pastor is? Like, have they, they found him? Because I've heard this theory yeah, before. They, 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 no, no, you can go see him. And he, he looks kind of like Elvis, and he sounds just like Elvis, and he has the same walk as Elvis. It's just all this weird stuff. I don't believe it, but I just like the I like the drama and reading the comments of yeah. people that are so sure. But um, I'd have to go Elvis there, respectfully. Yeah, that's big. I got to see the movie. I, see, I thought it was interesting because I've seen the trailer where Tom Hanks is talking in like a deep accent. And I was like, I didn't realize that Colonel Tom Parker had such an accent. So then I found these videos of Tom Parker talking. Yeah. He didn't have an accent at all. Like, I don't even know where, where the accent huh. came, comes from. He just sounds like a normal guy. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Before my time. But, but, right, exactly. Uh, David Morris, the song Carrying Your Love, it's number two on TikTok. But don't st- don't start, don't stop with the song. Yeah. You need to go back. You need to listen to the full EP. Yeah. You need to dive into the body of work. Just listen to... The hometown, our heart, the hometown, the hometown heartbreak, heartbreak EP, heartbreak and then go EP. listen to my 2020 debut album, Red, White, and American Blues. That will give you an idea. That after that, you can judge if you like me or not. You yeah. know, it's like really dive in and see who I am as an artist. Because I'm one of those guys. Like what you see is what you get. You know, it's like I'm me. That's it. Love it or hate it. Take it or leave it. Boom. I don't fit into this box. Cool. You don't understand it. Fine. But at least you can make an informed decision, you know. David Morris seems like a good place to end it. Thanks for coming into the Chase Studio. Zach, thank you, brother. Coming on to the podcast. This has been a great hour getting to know David Morris, who has the yeah. number two song on TikTok, Climbing thank Fast. Thank you. We're, let's get to number one. What's it going to take? I, I think naturally it's going to happen, man. Let's, let's I hope. it's going to happen. Let's hope. Let's get it, baby. David, great you, to brother. see you, man. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you for the vinyl. Really thank appreciate you, man. it. Appreciate you. Woo! Did we get it? Did we leave anything out?